Female comedian of the decade and best-selling author Michelle Court joins us now to tell us all about her fabulous new book, delving into the lives of 42 Kiwi couples. It tells the all-important tales of how we met. It's so great to have you this oh, studio, Michelle. Yeah. Yeah. Now. Great book, great what a, book. What a Thank really you. gorgeous book. Um, great idea too. Mm, and mm. I thought, oh, why don't we think of this? So how did you think you know, about it? Why does this book not already exist? Yeah. So I was in Rar this is the most Kiwi thing you can imagine. I was in Rarotonga with my husband on a holiday, uh, hanging out with an English couple that we know who live there. Kiwi. <laughs> and uh, and we met them a few times for dinner. I said, so how did you two meet? And they told this amazing story about falling down a hole in a kebab shop in Derby back home <laughs> and she'd fallen down the cellar and he'd lifted her out and taken her home and they've been together for 19 years and it was such a gorgeous story and as they were telling it it was like watching them as they talked about falling in love it was like watching them fall in love again Aww. and so and yeah so I said you know somebody should write a book about all of those stories and they all looked at me and I went oh well right so I did I came home and did a shout out on social media and radio and people started delivering their stories to me. Wow. Yeah. Oh, there's so much to investigate, but um, is it based on a theory of yours, this book? Yeah, so my theory was that one of the things that holds couples together is having a shared story. And if that shared story, you know, that's why we have weddings, right? So that you've got a thing you can look back to with photographs and videos and whatever. Um, but if you have a shared story about about falling in love, every time you tell the story of falling in love, you fall in love again, because mm. you revisit those emotions. Yeah. So it's one of the ways that in this crazy, chaotic, difficult, complicated world, you can weave your lives together. So I ran that I theory it. past the couples and a neuroscientist and a relationship expert. Turns out I'm right. Yes, oh, yes, yes of gorgeous. course you are. Yeah. Uh, you had some quite strict criteria about I stories did. that went into here. What was I that? did. Well, I broke the rule, but the rule was that um, <laughs> Um, couples had needed to have been together for 15 years or more. Mm -hmm. Just because I figure that's when it's a bedded in relationship. You've been through two uh, seven year itch cycles, if you like, <laughs> uh, and you've, you know, you've taken off the table I might just leave yeah. and, and thrown down, hey, I'm going to stay here and, and work this through because I can't be bothered breaking anybody else in at this point. <laughs> <laughs> and that is truly romantic. Um, but 15 years ago too, there's no Tinder. No. I mean, getting together was a totally different thing. There are a couple of internet dating stories in there. And, you know, obviously if I wrote this book in 10 years' time, every story would start. Had so you I, meet. I swiped right. Yeah. <laughs> um, but no, so I wanted hot bodies in the room. I wanted people who had a really established relationship and I also wanted to get the wisdom from them about how they managed to stay together. So, um, yeah, so 15 years seemed like a good benchmark. Were there any common themes? Because uh, New Zealand is a little bit different when it comes to meeting. Because I've always assumed that Kiwis are the type that kind of meet somebody, take them home, and then yep. decide whether they have a relationship yeah, afterwards. Yeah, totally. What's your name and what do you like yeah. in the morning? Um, yeah, yeah, that right. might just be you, Mike, but anyway. <laughs> no, I think it's very common. So there's a few stories that start like that. So I think the common threads are that there's always consent. Nobody ever assumes that anybody else is attracted to them. It's always a process of feeling each other out. Turns out humans are really good at reading that in each other. Like men can actually hear a woman ovulate. I don't mean complaint, you know, not like an, an egg going ding down. Ding ling ling It's not like an alarm going off, yeah. but in the timbre of her voice. So, uh, you know, really? it's primal stuff about knowing who's fertile and who's not. Anyway, so common threads, consent. Nobody says they were romantic. And everybody right. goes through a period of friendship. And that might happen after the one night stand turns yeah. into the relationship, but they'll go through a period of courting, old fashioned courting. Mm. Yeah. One of my um, favourite chapters was the uh, one about the farmer who was married. Yes. It? Yeah, scandal. Oh, scandal. I love that story. It's my favourite too. Uh, well, oh. you know, I'm not supposed to have favourites, they're like children. But <laughs> uh, yeah, so a young woman goes to work on a farm, falls in love with a farmer, he's married with kids, she falls pregnant, leaves the farm. 13 years later, her daughter wants to find the father. Coincidentally, he wants to find the child. Wow. The three of them meet. They fall in love again and get married. Oh, Isn't that stop nice? it? And love happily yeah. ever after. Oh, that is beautiful. And it's a little bit out of the norm, and that is just lovely. Yeah. Did you go and meet all of the couples? When you Not all of them. No, I probably met with uh, maybe 15 or 20 of the couples, and the rest of them we either we talked by email or Skype 
or, or telephone, but I did tootle around the country eating people's cake and drinking tea. Was it really hard not to go, oh, all the time when oh, you were to Oh, I did all the time. Mm. I did all the time, yeah. It, I spent a lot of my time going either, oh, that's so lovely, or you two Ooh. should get a robe. I'll just be out. Something about love, when you're talking about love, you're right, you fall in fall love all over love again. again. Yeah. Yeah. That's it. yeah, and yeah. the world needs a bit of kindness, right? I don't know if you've yeah. heard about North Korea and, um, and Trump, but I mm -hmm. think some kindness in the world, and this is just a book full of people being lovely and human and sweet. No, and immortalised, I guess, in a book as well, their stories, the which story I quite like thing. as well. Look, and yeah. I've got to mention this, I, I broke my heart reading the chapter about your mum and dad who oh, feature in yeah, here. A very, very sad chapter that must have been hard for you. It was you. really hard to write. So my, I interviewed my mum and dad. I didn't know their, how they met story. And in between the interview and when I wrote their chapter, my father died. So it was really quite emotional to listen to the tape mm. of their oh. conversation and write their story but also a really lovely thing to be able to do. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. How yeah, long did it right. take you to write it? I did a year's worth of research in my spare time and then I spent most of last year, eight, eight nine months last year, oh. writing it. And what about your story? How you met Jeremy? Jeremy and I uh, met at work. <laughs> 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 so boring, eh? Really boring. So, no, we're not. Um, um, how we <laughs> met story's not in there. Yeah, yeah. exactly. No, but well, I it's the one line. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, met at work. No, but I love it because you've taken real life and you've got a bit of neuroscience in there as yeah. well and it's just you know a brilliantly written a good rollicking read yeah. in a time that is as you say quite complicated yeah. so pick it up and enjoy it well thank done you. another stellar performance oh, for michelle thank, <laughs> good you. Work. thank you very much michelle's yeah. famous book how we met is available right now